What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at CG Affine Transformations, a way where you can scale, skew, and otherwise transform views to meet your needs. Now we're on the Apple developer documentation page. There's a lot of math behind this, but this clearly is in Math Academy. So we're going to close this up. We're going to hit that like button down below because y'all love the video already. And we're going to jump into Xcode and take a look at these transformations. So let's go ahead and open up Xcode, create a new project. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS as soon as Xcode decides to stop being slow and get its life together. Hopefully, there we go. And let's go with the app under iOS. We're going to call this transform example. And I was actually using this in an app I'm working on pretty recently. So I figured it'd be kind of cool to make a video on. Go ahead and create the project, save it on your desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and collapse this right panel. Man, my Xcode loves being slow when I do videos. And we'll also expand our window here. And we're gonna be working in our view controller. Now, first and foremost, before we actually write our code, let me go ahead and boot up a simulator. I think I've actually got it going already. There it is. So essentially what we're gonna do, what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at using a transformation to do three things. We're gonna look at translate, uh, we're going to look at scaling and most interesting, in my opinion, we're going to look at rotation. So the, uh, the essence of a transformation is uh, twofold. So you apply the transformation to the view you want to uh, transform. Uh, super surprising. And then the other part is if you ever want to reset it, you can do that with a special type of transformation called identity. And all of this you can animate. So we're going to say identity. So let's take a look at a basic example. I'm gonna create a view first and foremost and stick it on our view controller hierarchy. So I'm gonna create my view. It's gonna be nothing more than just a basic UI view. We need to give this guy a frame and we're gonna add it as a sub view. So we're gonna say view, add sub view my view. Let me give it a background color so y'all can see it. We're gonna make it system blue perhaps. Let's go with system blue. And we also need to remember to give it a frame. So we're going to give it a frame of 00, 0, 200 by 200, something arbitrary. And let me just go ahead and center it so we can actually see it in the middle of the screen. So go ahead and give that a run. Let me collapse this window here so we can see the simulator on the side. And there it goes. We should see a blue square in the middle of the screen that we just added. And next we'll jump right in to the transformations. So while that is loading over there, let's create a function called transform, which we're gonna call one by one just to see the effect of this transformation at play. It looks like the app is still launching. My simulator has been slow of late, so bear with it. So cool, so how do we actually apply a transformation? Well, it's really simple actually. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say my view dot transform. Now you'll see there's a transform 3D as well. I'm gonna cover this in another video. We're gonna focus on just this one here today. And we're gonna start off with a scaling transformation. So we're gonna say CG affine transform. And we want the one that has a scale uh, argument. So there's scale X and there's scale Y. So we're gonna pass in uh, two for both of these. Now what this is essentially saying is we wanna scale this up by a factor of two. It's not two points or two pixels, it's a factor. So a percentage, in other words, we wanna double the size. And we're gonna go ahead and call this function an in view did load, but we're gonna delay it by one second so we can see a bit of the initial starting state first. So I'm gonna say dispatch queue async after now plus one second. Maybe we'll even go ahead and make this two. And we're gonna say self.transform. So go ahead and give that a run and let's see what happens. So we start off like that and it gets super large. Surprise, surprise. That's what is expected to happen. Now it kind of just jumped there, which isn't all that nice. So let's go ahead and wrap this in a animation with duration block. So we're gonna say, go ahead and animate this with a duration of maybe 0 0.3. We don't particularly care about uh, you know the options and delay and all this jazz here. So we're just gonna delete them. They're nullable arguments. And in the animation, we're simply going to call this transform function and we don't really care about a completion handler either so we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna give it a run one more time now we expect the same thing to happen but obviously now it'll uh, animate to the larger state which it in fact did so looking pretty good let me call this function scale and let's get rid of uh, this here and let's do the next one 
So the next one is going to be, uh, instead of transform, let me give it a better name, we're gonna say rotate. Now this is the one I was using recently to rotate a view. Um, so I think this is the one that the most, most of you will find interesting in terms of building pretty nice looking UIs. So we're gonna say CG Affine Transform, and I believe it takes a rotation angle. Now it's not as simple as just passing in 90 for 90 degrees. We need to use uh, some trigonometry here, but not to worry, Swift has us covered. We can say pi, this will rotate it by 180 degrees, pi over two I should say, since pi is the entire way around. If we want to rotate it, let's say just, uh, let's, let's, let's do pi over two, let's do 180 degrees. If we wanted to do 90 degrees, we would say four, which is what I was gonna do, but let's stick with this. And let's stick self.rotate in here, just like that. Go ahead and give that a run, and we expect it to rotate. Now the reason that this one I think is really cool, so we saw there it just rotated, but it doesn't help that the square still looks the exact same. The reason I think this one is particularly cool is you can imagine in apps where you want to rotate parts of the UI, whether it's for a pretty simple game in a UI kit, or if you want to build a photo editing app and you want to pinch to you know rotate things, Instead of using a gesture recognizer, you can use these transformations to actually make this happen. And it's really simple to do, and maybe I'll do a video on that if y'all wanna see it. Now the last one I wanna cover here is going to be, let's see, we did scale, we did rotate, and we're gonna do translate. So for those of you who took uh, you know, basic math back in school, we can translate something on the coordinate plane, X and Y. So similarly, we can do that here as well. So we're gonna say CG affine transform, and we wanna translate either on the X axis or the Y axis. So I'm gonna say go 100 more to the right from the center, and maybe go like 200 down. Now you might be wondering what's the difference in transforming a translation or just moving the frame of the initial view. There are some nuanced differences, but for the purposes of this example, we can treat them as one and the same, which is why I left this one for last. It's one of the least interesting ones, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and call it, and let's see what happens. And after this, we'll take a look at resetting the transformation, so we expect this thing to move down here. Surprise, surprise, it has moved. Now, the other thing we're gonna do is in the completion handler, we are going to reset the animation. So once again, we're gonna introduce a delay block in here, so let's be lazy. And I'm just gonna copy and paste it like that. So after the animation initially finishes, in two more seconds, we're gonna say self.myview.transform, and we're gonna say it turns to identity. Now, identity is kind of a misleading term here. This basically just resets any transformation that has been applied. One thing that I glossed over here is you can apply multiple transformations together. And since we're doing pretty good on time, maybe I'll show an example of that right after this one. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move it and then two seconds later, we're gonna say identity, so it moves back. So let's go ahead and apply multiple transformations. So we'll say apply multiple, just like that. And up here, we're gonna say apply multiple. And now apply multiple isn't as simple as just calling all three of these. We can actually concatenate these together, but the syntax is a little strange. So we're gonna say CG affine. First, we're going to perhaps rotate this. So I'm gonna say go ahead and rotate this, uh, maybe pi over two. So we're gonna flip it 180 degrees. Then we're gonna concatenate another uh, transformation here. So we're gonna say CG affine transformation. We're gonna translate it and we're gonna maybe go to the left by 100 and go up by 200. And you can actually do as many of these together as you'd like. So we're gonna concatenate one more. And since we took a look at scaling, we're gonna take a look at that one here too. We're gonna say go ahead and scale this down by 50%. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a run. So we expect all of these animation transformations to happen in tandem visually at the same time. So it was a little quick there, and then it kind of came back. But one thing we can do is uh, increase the time of the animation. So let's make it one second, and also to come back, it'll be one second. Might be a little easier to visualize. And let's take a look, and then we will wrap this up. Now you can also change the color when this is happening, but it's pretty cool, because when you tie these together, you can get some pretty interesting looking events, especially once you have uh, some user interactions. So the one last takeaway I'll call out here, if you've ever used any type of swiping app, uh, maybe you know you wanna use something like 
uh, TikTok where you double tap the video and you see the heart. And you, if you've ever noticed, the heart that shows up on the video before disappearing is on an angle. Now, the way that's achieved is by using these transformations. It's not just a you know slightly angled heart image. They actually take a look at the position of your finger and they rotate the heart. And similarly on apps like Tinder or Bumble, these dating apps, if you ever want to you know, figure out how they swipe the card left and right, they're using transformations under the hood. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Pretty short and sweet video. I've been super swamped with work and other commitments lately, which is why the video uh, rate has slowed down. I definitely will keep up with at least one video a week to keep you guys updated on the latest and greatest. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below. Comment to let me know what you think of transformations and if you want to see 3D transformations. And as always, subscribe if you haven't done so already for latest Swift, Swift UI, iOS, and other tech videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.